Okay, um, let's talk about core memories. This might seem like a little bit of a weird topic for a video, but I'm interested in it mostly in terms of how do we create core memories that our brains allow us and love to return to that are just part of our everyday lives. It's usually a lot easier for us to remember things where our emotions or our senses are heightened, um, but I just really feel like one of the keys to being content is being able to enjoy and even like remember moments in our everyday life that bring us happiness. I want to be able to treasure moments from my everyday life, not just the high highs and the low lows. So this video is a little bit of a follow-up to the video that I made on how to practice contentment. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to check that out, I will link to it in this video. But basically, I believe that part of living a happy, satisfied life actually involves practicing contentment, trying to go after it. And so creating core memories that are part of your everyday life that make you ponder how much you love and enjoy the life that you have right now, that's part of this. So um, in today's episode, we're going to get a little bit geeky and that is actually fine. That's more than fine. I am so excited about it. Um, and, and we're going to talk about creating memories that just really resonate with you for years to come. So let's get to it. Core memories are memories that either have shaped you or hold special meaning for you. As I was researching this video, I found out that core memories is actually more of a like popular term. It's not a term that scientists or psychologists use, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it in this video because I feel like I have an understanding of what it is to me and it's something that a lot of us talk about and think about, um, but actually probably a little bit closer to what I mean when I talk about core memories are what psychologists refer to as episodic memories. I'm thinking about memories that I come back to again and again in my mind, ones that I can close my eyes and picture, almost like it's part of an episode of a TV show. I'm thinking about ones that come to me when I smell a specific fragrance or taste a certain taste or just like experience a certain sensation in my body. Those are the things that I think of when I think of core memories. And a lot of those actually fall under the category of episodic memories. All of us have these episodic memories. Actually, my husband and I were just talking about this recently because the way that he and I remember things is different, the way that we picture them in our minds. But even though like maybe he doesn't picture things as clearly in his mind as I do when like certain things come up, um, sometimes he'll say, oh, I have, a, I have a memory of that. Well, it's kind of fuzzy, but like I can see it. I can remember it as if I was there. And if you think about some of your most vivid memories, some of them are really happy, some of them are really sad. It doesn't feel like there's necessarily a rhyme or a reason to the way that your brain stores these memories, but there are actually a few things that make you more likely to remember a moment from your life. One of these is called the emotional enhancement of memory. And in every study that I read, it's referred to as EEM um, because emotional enhancement of memory is a mouthful, I guess. Uh, but basically it refers to the fact that we are more likely to remember things that either made us very um, heightened on like a positive emotions or very heightened on a negative emotion. And so if you think about your most vivid memories, chances are some of them are negative and that stinks. Um, and some of them are really positive. And both of those are your brain's way of trying to take care of you, of giving you this sort of um, advantage of saying like, oh, hey, that thing made us really happy. Let's try to do that again. Or that thing made us really sad or angry. Let's try to avoid that in the future. And emotional enhancement of memory is just one of the tools that we can use to try to enhance our memories so that we can remember the things that we really want to remember from our lives and really use that to practice contentment. So, um, Let's jump in. I'm going to be taking you through like a step-by-step -step process here. Um, and just a disclaimer here, I am not a scientist. Um, this is informed by research that I have done looking at like scientific 
studies and whatnot, it is informed by my own practice. But I am not saying that if you do this, you will guaranteed be able to remember a memory. But I do think that if you follow the steps in this video, that even if you aren't able to remember it, you will enjoy the process of your life better, which is also helpful if you are trying to practice contentment, if you are trying to live more fully in the moment. And so I think that this is worth doing, even if you can't guarantee that you will 100% be able to remember the memory every single time. Um, that's kind of the beauty of our brains is that at some point, we do have to kind of let go of con the control and trust that our brains and our bodies know what we need to remember. But at the same time, we can try to influence those things. So um, we're going to kind of live in that tension here with this episode. Um, and I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to hopefully create core memories from your everyday life. Because it's honestly these neutral events, the things that don't make us super happy or super sad that are hardest to remember. Okay, so let's get started. The process that I'm covering today actually has five steps and I'm going to list them here um, before we dive into each one in depth. So the steps that we're going to be walking through today are, first of all, think about what you want to remember. Second, get in touch or stay in touch with your emotions. Third, engage your senses. Fourth, pay attention to the moment that's right in front of you, be present. And five, give yourself time to remember. Okay, so let's jump in to step one, thinking about what you want to remember. While I was researching for this video, I came across some studies that seem to indicate that our ability to remember something is positively influenced by our intention to remember it. Now, this sort of makes sense intuitively, but it's good to know that there's actually like studies that back this up. So basically, if you go into a situation, the way that scientists test this is they will, you know, they'll have a control group and then they will prime a group. Uh, the control group, they will just do the experiment, show them a series of images, and then ask them to remember them later without any warning. And then in the experiment group, they tell them like, hey, you are going to be quizzed on this later. And the people who are told beforehand that they are going to be quizzed on the images um, perform better in the memory exercise than the people who are not told. And this makes sense. Um, if you don't know that something is important that you're going to have to remember it later, um, you're probably not going to try to remember it and you're probably not going to unless something really surprises you or takes you off guard. Something really unusual happens. So one way that you can try to really create a core memory of something in your life is to think about what you want to remember from your life. So for me, something that brings me a lot of small joy and that I want to remember is like the feeling of walking my dog on a sunny spring morning. And so that is something that I try to think about before I leave the house on a sunny spring morning. I go, okay, I want to remember this. And so that's just sort of a marker to my brain to pay attention. It can be all sorts of things. It can be the way that your child laughs. It can be the way that your partner's hand feels. It, it can be anything. Um, just think about what you want to remember and go ahead and make a note to yourself before you head into that situation so that you're better able to pay attention and engage and do all of the steps that come after this. And this doesn't have to be like a big, long drawn out thing. You could sit down and think about like five things that you want to remember from your life and then just sort of map out a time to try to engage with those things. Or you could think about it on the fly. I don't really care. And that's totally up to your personal preference for the types of core memories that you want to make. Um, but you do probably need to be paying enough attention to the things that you want to remember to be able to do the next steps.
Second step, get in touch and or stay in touch with your emotions. As we've talked about earlier in this video, emotions are a powerful force when it comes to remembering things. And so if you're like a lot of us, like myself included, and you just kind of go through your life and you're kind of ignoring your emotions, pushing them off, not um, processing them until like much, much later after the fact, um, it's going to be really hard for you to stay in touch with like maybe those softer or more subtle emotions. Um, and this is a loss because if something amuses you or makes you just a little bit happy in the moment or makes you surprised, like you want to be able to remember those things, but if you're so busy shoving off your emotions, you're not going to be able to engage fully with what's going on um, inside of you and outside of you. And so um, part of being able to create these core memories is doing the work, you know, talking to a therapist or whatever you need to do to get in touch with your emotions and stay in touch with them in this moment that you are trying to remember. I'm not saying it has to be perfect all of the time, but you do need to have some ability to be in touch with that in the moment that you're trying to remember. Um, and I'm not a therapist, but I did create an episode on this channel of tools that you can use to stay in touch with your emotions that are not therapy, um, that have been really helpful to me in addition to therapy in my life. And so I will link to that as well. But basically like here, the idea is to be in touch with your emotions because those are powerful drivers of memory. The third step is to engage your senses. Just like your emotions, your senses help you to remember things more vividly. This is actually something that Gretchen Rubin talks about in her book, Life in Five Senses, which is a fantastic read if you have not read it. Um, she's just really talking about exploring her senses and also covers like what scientists have studied and found out about senses. And it turns out that just like your emotions, your senses are very helpful for helping you engage your memories. Um, something that she talks about in the book is the specific way that tastes prompt memories or like smells. I think that for me, those are probably the two that most vividly bring memories forward because they're the two that I, um, kind of neglect the most, I guess. Um, but I think that this is true for any sense. And so if you can really engage with your senses in the moment, that's great. Another thing that I think could be sort of a hack for this is that if there is something that you want to remember and you're having trouble, like feeling any emotion about it or engaging any senses, try like engaging a sense in a new way. So like, for example, if you want to remember the feeling of getting up in the morning, making your first cup of coffee for the day, what that's like in your life right now, maybe try playing the same song when you do it or like eating the same food with it every single day or something like that, like bringing actual extra sensory information in if you just feel like there's not enough for you to remember and have this like core memory, episodic memory about it. Um, engaging your senses and actually bringing more in is a great way to do that. I don't feel like with emotions, you can necessarily do that. Um, it's pretty hard to fake your own emotions with yourself, but you can bring in extra things for your senses to latch onto and that might make the me memory more vivid. Okay, the fourth thing is to pay attention in the moment and to the moment, like to what is happening both in you and in front of you. I think this is probably sort of self-explanatory at this point, but I did want to include this step because first of all, it's sort of what all of these things have been leading up to the first three steps. And it's also something where like, if you follow the first three steps, it could be very easy to get stuck behind a journal or stuck in your own head and in your reflections and what you're experiencing and what you really want to make sure that you're doing is that you are using those as avenues to connect with what is happening in front of you. If you're not used to paying attention to what's going on in your emotions and what's going on with your senses, again, like I am, there's no judgment here. Um, practice it throughout the day, practice it in moments that you don't actually care so much about remembering so that when you get to a moment that you do want to be fully present in and engage with, you're able to pay attention to those things, but they're not like so overwhelming and new that you can't 
like properly function in the moment. And then when something that you want to remember comes along, you should be better equipped to actually engage with it. You're going to want to put your phone and your camera away. I feel like a lot of times we take pictures of things that we want to remember and that actually stops our brain from remembering them as well because we're so stuck behind our phone or our camera. And just like slow your body down, stop what you're doing for a minute and allow yourself to focus. Focus your thoughts and what you are doing on what is happening in front of you. Allow yourself to savor this moment and notice like the sensations and the emotions that you are feeling without making those the main focus of what's going on. Basically, if you want to be able to remember something later, the kindest way to do it to yourself is to be fully present when that happens. Okay. And then the final step is to give yourself space to remember. I think that a lot of us don't do this. And this is actually why we have bad memories. We are good at being present in the moment. Maybe, you know, we're good or not good at the other things that we've mentioned, but really one of the things that time and time again, that scientists find is that if you want to improve your memory of a certain fact or a certain thing, or even like something that has happened to you in your life, you have to be able to remember it. This is why civilizations tell the same stories over and over and over. This is why probably some of your most vivid memories um, are from your childhood because you actually had time to mull things over and remember them. And this is also why you might really enjoy yourself and forget about that thing like in a couple of weeks because you just are going and going and going and going and you don't actually have the space to remember those things. And I'm not saying that that is always bad or that is always something that you have to avoid because sometimes seasons of life or goals that you have mean that you're not able to have as much a space in your life as you want. But if your desire is to be more content with your life and to create these core memories that you can go back to, um, you actually have to make time to go back to them after you try to remember them. So one really good practice to integrate is to make sure that you allow yourself time to rehearse that memory, to recall it when it's still fresh in your mind. So maybe like within the next 24 hours after that thing happens, make sure that you take a moment, pause and reflect on it. You can put a simple reminder on your phone or on like, if you have a digital assistant like Google or Alexa, like you can put a reminder on that. Um, or you can just, you know, say like, okay, after dinner or after breakfast or whatever, I'm just going to pause and try to remember this and then do it, you know, maybe in the next couple of days and then do it again over the next couple of days and just try to remember as vividly what you felt, what was going on, what you saw. And eventually the hope is that you will find that that memory just starts to come to you at certain places and you have the delight and the joy of realizing that part of your everyday life is something that brings you a lot of happiness and contentment. This may not work for every memory, every time. And if it doesn't work perfectly, give yourself some grace to keep trying. Um, I feel like with this process, like the best case is that you remember it and you have this memory that you can treasure for years and years and years. And the worst case is that you really were able to engage with what is happening in front of you. You were really able to be intentional about the life that you're living and the things that you enjoy in it. You were able to reflect on that. And all of those things are a win. So keep trying to create those core memories and practice contentment. And I think that you will find that your life is richer as a result.